All right. I want to take every one of you back in time, back in history. We are, we have a theme for the year, his story in 2024. Now, his story is our history, okay? Jonah, the book of Jonah, is the biggest fish story in history. And today, now the first week we talked about you can run, but you can't hide from God. Last week I spoke to you about when you can't get any lower, <laughs> Jonah in the belly of a big fish, bottom of the ocean. Today I want to talk to you about when God relents, when God changes his mind. Okay? But I'm going to take you back first and foremost, 1891. Okay? Anybody remember that day? <laughs> Didn't think so. In 1891, there was a ship called the Star of the East. I want you to think about those wise men just for a second, okay? And on board this ship, which, which was a whaling vessel, by the way, was a man by the name of James Bartley. You can Google that after service, not now, okay? And he was part of a team that was whaling. And this big sperm whale hit the boat and knocked him over, and he disappeared. And now his shipmates thought he was gone or a goner. Well, later on that day, they harpooned a big sperm whale. They didn't cut it open until 36 hours later, okay? And when they cut the stomach open, out plopped their shipmate. James curled up in a ball as white as white can get from the gassic juices of the whale, okay? He was described by his shipmates as deadly white. I don't know what that means, but they called it parchment white. His head, his hands, his body. And he was alive after 36 hours being in a whale's belly. Now, why do I tell you that story? I tell you that story because one of the biggest bone of contention, and I'm going to add fish bone of contention, for critics of the Bible, people who do not believe the Bible, or people who say the Bible just contains God's word, it's not God's word from cover to cover, their biggest bone of contention is Jonah and the big fish. They say it's impossible for a fish to swallow a man. See, I feel and I think. Verses, thus says the Lord. The book of Jonah is historical. It's validated by Jesus himself. When Jesus walked on earth, he looked back in history and says, let me tell you something. What happened to Jonah is a sign to all of you. As Jonah was in the belly of a big fish for three days, I will be in the belly of the earth. Jesus validated the book of Jonah, Jonah himself, and those Ninevites, those people. And in recent history, okay, a whale has swallowed a man, and the man lived after a day and a half. So it's plausible, but we believe it is a miracle. Quick recap on the book of Jonah. Jonah was a prophet, and God said, go to Nineveh. He decided, I'm not going to listen to God. Have you ever not listened to God? <laughs> God says, do this, and you do the opposite. He wanted to go to Spain. The difference is 2,000 miles. Nineveh is Iraq today. Uh, Tarsus is Spain. He gets on a boat, falls asleep, a storm arises, the seamen... Okay, on that boat, cast lots to see who's causing the problem, and it ended up on Jonah. And Jonah says, throw me overboard. I'm running from the creator of heaven and earth. And he said, no, we won't. And they tried to oar more to get to shore, and it just got worse. Finally, these pagan seamen prayed to God before they threw Jonah overboard and basically said, forgive us. <laughs> for what we are about to do. And the minute they threw Jonah overboard, he was a goner, Jonah, and the wind and the waves calmed down. 
and these pagan seamen began to worship the God of Jonah, the creator of heaven and earth. The first miracle is the transformation of these pagans, seamen, who threw Jonah overboard. They not only worshiped Jonah's God, made offerings and sacrifices to him. Chapter two of Jonah, he's in the belly of this whale for three days, thinking and praying to his God. And God listened to his plea, and Jonah in the belly of the fish turns around. Second miracle. He now looks to his God. When you think you can't get any lower, Jonah got really low, okay? We're gonna pick up the story, chapter three, by reading the last verse of chapter two. Chapter two, verse 10 ends this way. And the Lord spoke to the fish. Isn't it interesting? God can speak to the wind and the waves, remember Jesus? Okay, and they'll calm down. Jesus, or God, can appoint a fish to swallow Jonah, and when he speaks to the fish, it listens. Jonah had trouble with listening to God. And I want you to know, we do too, <laughs> just like Jonah, okay? And this is what we're told. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah out upon dry land. Now, that's kind of gross, isn't it? Vomit, spit up. I'll never forget it. There was my dog, Bear in front of the television, laying down, trying to vomit. You know, maybe you've seen a dog or somebody, mouth open and kind of gagging, mouth open, gagging. This went on for the longest time. I'm going, what's his problem? All of a sudden, out of bear's mouth came this white, slimy stuff. And, you know, you maybe have to clean up vomit before. It doesn't smell good, does it? As I got close, it smelled like spring. It smelled so good. I got a paper towel and I wiped it up and I, wow, it smells like Irish spring soap. I went to the bathroom and there, my bar of soap was gone. This dog of mine, Bear, ate it and threw up Irish spring. Why do I tell you that story? Because... Throwing up is part of life, you might say. But I want you to know when that whale or big fish vomited or threw up Jonah, he did not smell like Irish spring, okay? <laughs> he probably was very fishy. And we know from experience, okay, in recent history, he was probably as white as a ghost. Deadly white, now you can probably imagine those folks in Nineveh, eyes going, who, who is this guy? What does he have to say? Okay, we're gonna pick up the story. Chapter three, this is what happened. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Has God ever had to tell you twice what to do? Because <laughs> you don't listen the first time? Saying, arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it, the message that I tell you. Well, let me tell you about Nineveh. Nineveh is one of the biggest, greatest cities of the time, okay? It is believed it had over 500,000 people to a million, okay? It was big. It was evil, very evil. The city was known for this, dismembering and ripping apart people. That's how evil they were. It is stated, or it is, some historians say just bodies and body parts were just all over the city. Yeah, it was evil. It was not a good city. Now, the miracle of the book of Jonah is not that a big fish or whale swallowed Jonah. The big miracle of Jonah is that this pagan evil city repented. There was a revival that even Billy Graham cannot match. Now, the biggest revival that Billy Graham ever preached to the people was around a million people, but only 5% responded. A big percent responding for any revival would be around 10%. That would be unbelievable. Nineveh, Jonah, the reluctant prophet, 100% 
revival responded to God's word. That is the miracle. Let's see how that transpired. Three, so Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city. It had walls 100 feet high. That's how big it was. Three days journey in breath. I think I could walk from East Tulsa to West Tulsa in one day. This was a three-day journey. Hmm, that was a big city. Four, Jonah began to go into the city going a day's journey. Before he said anything, he went one day into the heart of Nineveh. This is a big city. And he called out. Here's Jonah's words. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now, I'm sure God gave him a lot more to say to these people, but the book of Jonah, the writer, just puts it into a nutshell. It's like God saying to you, stop. Don't go that way. Go this way. That's simple. Five, and the people of Nineveh believed God. They put their faith in God. They put their trust in God. They called for a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them to the least of them. This is the biggest revival in the history of the world. Hmm. Why would they put on sackcloth and ashes? It was an, an external form of remorse for what was taking place on the inside, what God was doing. How do you know if somebody is truly sorry by the way they act and by what they do? It is God who looks at your heart. God read the hearts of these folks at Nineveh. They showed that they were truly sorry by what they did. They repented. The good news is this. When we repent of whatever sin it may be, God forgives us. Hmm. But it didn't stop with the people. This is a bottom-up revival and a top-down revival. Think about the city of Tulsa or Broken Arrow. And the mayor, the leader of the city, this is what the king of Nineveh did. Six, and the word reached the king of Nineveh. And he rose from his throne, removed his robe, covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes. He too was struck by the word of God. And he issued a proclamation and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles. This is the rulers. Okay? Let neither man nor beast, it even affected the animals. Herd nor flock taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and let them call out, notice this, mightily to God. Wow. Have you ever cried out mightily to your God? Pleaded with him? Hmm. And let everyone turn from his evil ways and from the violence that is in his hands. They recognized they were evil. They recognized their violence. 10, when God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God relented of the disaster that he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. <laughs> this is good news for those folks in Nineveh, and good news for each and every one of us here, what are you going to take home? First and foremost, I want you to take this home. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the Bible is in control of everything. He controls the wind and the waves. He controls fish and birds. He controls mountains. And he controls what happens in our life. And he sends not a prophet Jonah, but other people to share God's word like Pastor Dreyer, another pastor, a teacher, parents, who says, this is what God says. Let's do what he says. And when we don't and we repent, he forgives. 
Another thing I want you to take home is this. The God of the Bible is a God who loves everyone, even those evil people in Nineveh. Yes, God desires all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. They were pagans. They were unbelievers, and God sent a prophet, and they repented of their sin. God loves everyone and desires them to be saved. Another thing that I want you to take home is that God searches for people even if they're evil, and he wants to find them and he wants to bring them home. Now, Jonah is a real story in history. The story of a whale or a fish swallowing Jonah actually happened. And I want want you to take this home. I'm gonna read a scripture to you and I wanna show you what Jesus did when he walked on earth. It is Jesus who takes us back in history, like I did in my sermon. He takes us back to Jonah and the Ninevites. When Jesus walked on earth, it is the people who asked him questions. And he said, let me take you back in history and move you to the present and take you to the future and bring you back. Jesus is the originator of back to the future. Okay, well, and I'm going to show you that here with the Ninevites and in the Lord's Supper this morning. You ready? Listen to these words. Matthew 12, beginning with verse 38. Here's history. Ready? Some of the scribes and the Pharisees answered Jesus saying, Teacher, we wish to see a sign from you But Jesus answered them, an evil and adulterous generation in the present, just like Nineveh, seeks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. The sign, Jonah was a sign. Imagine how white and smelly he was. (laughs) What a sign that might have been, okay? Listen to what Jesus said about Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Jesus is taking them to the immediate future, just a few days ahead, back to the future. And then he goes way to the future. 41, the men of Nineveh, will rise up at the judgment, the last day, with this generation and condemn it. For they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, one greater than Jonah is here in the present. So what did Jesus do with the people of his time? He said, remember the story of Jonah? It's real. Remember those Ninevites? who repented, they're in heaven. As Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days, I'll be in the belly of the earth three days, the immediate future. And in the end of the world future, it'll be the Ninevites standing up and probably saying something like this. We had Jonah, that's it. You had Jesus himself, the son of God. Jonah was swallowed by a whale. (laughs) Jesus died. And three days later, rose from the dead. And you didn't repent and believe him? (laughs) You're judged. And Jesus brings us right back to the present. One greater than Jonah is here. And in the next verse, he says, one greater than Solomon is here. Do you believe? My prayer is this, that you'll take home the fact that you believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God who created the heavens and the earth, the God of Jonah, the God of the Ninevites. Who is he? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the God of history. Amen.